Hello and welcome to Analyzing Avatar, the late airbender. I am Dan and I'm joined by the late airbender himself, the guy who got into the show just far too late. Chris, how you doing? Hey, what's up? <laughs> sup? Sup. Very, very slick. <laughs> um, I was... I was caught off guard. The last few, I think you've just said analysing Avatar. So when you said the late airbender, I was like, oh. And then when you were like, made a thing of it, I was like, oh God, maybe he's noticed. <laughs> uh, no, I just, you know, I'm not gonna, I, I might not do it every time. It's quicker to say analysing Avatar. But uh, yeah. every now and then, I'll, I will acknowledge the full title of the podcast. Yeah. And it gave me an As opportunity to introduce you to the lovely yeah. people. It so, was very nicely done. Uh, uh, as always, whenever we do anything even remotely resembling real podcasting, uh, or radio sort of style, you know, in terms of like segues, or whatever. We immediately ruin it by pointing them out. So yeah, um, I'm glad. I'm glad we've kept our tradition. <laughs> classic, classic. Nothing but static there, people. Uh, uh. So we uh, we just watched Jet. Um, for those who don't remember, Jet is the episode in which they meet Jet, uh, the freedom fighter. It's also a bit of a prick. Um, <laughs> it, basically, they meet him. Um, Katara and Ang are kind of like quite smitten with him um they think he's like this you know this great hero that's saving people and like doing the right thing and helping the fight with the fire nation and being brave and all that but sort of soccer starts to see through him that maybe he's a bit of a thug and maybe he's pushing it too far uh in terms of like hurting innocent people um we do the typical soccer doesn't like him and wants to move on but they do they think he's just being jealous but, you know, he's got legit reason to be concerned about Jet. And then eventually everyone realizes Jet's a prick. There's a big fight and Sokka saves the day. Um, and all the innocent people that Jet's very, very ill thought out plan would have would have killed. Um, that's the episode. That's the summary. Where, 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 where are we at, Chris? What are well, you thinking? Funny. It was, it's funny because like last, last week um, I had sort of like a number of nitpicks. Yes. Whereas this week I've just got kind of one compliment, which is... Um, but I don't think, you know, I, I, I agree, Jet's behaving like a prick, but I think that this whole episode is is a uh, is an analysis of how different people react to war and mm. the different types of reaction you can have. Sokka has not lost his humanity, and Sokka knows that uh, the, the nation as a whole is not necessarily representative of its leaders. Mm-hmm. Um and whereas Jet is just gone gone the entire Fire Nation bad um and is you know anti anti the uh, anti those actions um and I yeah. think it's uh, you know as well as some really nice character stuff about Sokka and Katara and stuff it's um it's just really I thought it was really interesting um and uh, yeah I, I like this episode and I think mainly because of that like it's it's weird like I say I don't have a series of little things I think I think that general analysis I am one slight nitpick is like how I mean they're really painting the fire nation to be not very smart here like hmm these people keep attacking us from the trees Hey, where do you think their hideout is? No idea. Nope. No, they seem. It's just they seem to be really good with coming in and out and and using the trees. <laughs> no, no, no. Keep looking on the ground. Keep looking for them, people. Re- really? Look. <laughs> just, just. Has anyone checked in that bush yet? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know that bush with the rope hanging down from it. Maybe we should. Because clearly. They put they put those traps up, didn't they? So it's not like they can't because they play it as they'll never find us here. Like the Fire Nation can't get higher than two foot or something. But like I, actually, j- they can. Fi- the Fire Nation are a bit like cows, Chris. They can go up the stairs, but they can't go down. So they tend not to go. <laughs> you boo! They set those traps anyway. If you were born, in the, look, Chris. The- if you were born in the Fire Nation, your vision cuts out once you're above six feet. <laughs> Seemingly, seemingly. Um, but anyway, but that, that's a very tiny thing. But no, I really enjoyed this episode. Um, so yeah, yeah, I, I would agree. I, 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 I think you've, you've, you've pretty much hit on all the main things I like about this episode as well. Um, I think with Jet, the reason I say a bit of a prick is because at the end he's going far enough. He's, he's, he's killing Earth Nation people oh, yeah. too at the end. Oh yeah, I'm not, I'm so not denying he's a prick. I'm so, just saying I think that's there's, there's. I wouldn't. No, so I wouldn't nominate Jet for Nob of the Week because gotcha. There, that would, there that is, was a question I had for you. Was he going to be nominated? No, because obviously he's he's behaving badly. But there are he, the Fire Nation killed his parents. It is a it whether you relate to it or not, whether you kind of understand. It's one of those things where 
you know, I'm I'm with soccer. I've got a lot of humanity, I'd like to think. So I don't understand it, but I at least understand the logic. I understand the reasoning. I understand yeah. why. You don't ag- you don't it. agree, but you understand. Yeah, I think I think knob of yeah. the week is when it's like like that that prick that told in so- that told told on the Yeah, like, he's the only just... he's so far the only person on our Nobed Hall of Fame list. Yeah, and and just because that's a decision where it's like there's no logic to that decision. You're just being a knob. Soccer's yeah. um, Jet's log- logic is incredibly flawed. His logic is wrong, but mm-hmm. he is a victim of war. Yeah, of course. I, I but the, 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 then the, the question of the episode kind of becomes like whether you've been wronged or not. Like keeping your humanity is like uh, absolutely is key. And 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 like he was willing to risk innocent lives, not just Fire Nation lives, but Earth Kingdom lives. Uh, you know, children and families in order to rid the, na- the, the valley of the Fire Nation. And it's like. Yeah, it's it's it, it's clear the intention of the episode is to show us how war has warped him, um, and 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 you know put him on a on a wrong path maybe, um, shows him as being misguided for sure. Do you do you um, want him to be nominated for Nobed Hall of Fame? Is this what you're building to? No, I no, I don't. I I, I know I agree, I agree with what you're saying. I think you it's it, it's it's. It's uh, it's it is the difference, and we talk about this a lot um, on our other podcast, nothing but static. But a good villain, you really d- you should understand where they're coming from. Whether you, you don't need to agree with them, but they need to have a certain yeah. they, have, they need to have enough explanation, enough grounding for you to see how their mind got to where it got to, even yeah. if you then don't agree with their conclusion. Do you, do you know what it's I mean? The... You need to be able to trace it back because if you can't understand why the villain's doing something, then they devolve into mustache twirling, which is just a a phrase we use for just like you know he's the villain because the story needs a villain so he's just evil yeah. he it's just the... wants to do bad things and it's that old saying isn't it about the villain should see themselves as the hero yeah like it's the from... it's the hidden it's the hidden strength of the, the hidden highlight and actually potentially the strongest point in infinity war is the fact that it's stanos's film harry potter does it with voldemort stretched over across multiple books and films obviously mm-hmm. um, mainly half blood prince but you know it stretches across whereas infinity war you could watch infinity foot war and not necessarily realize it but fundamentally thanos is the main character in infinity war <laughs> yeah yeah but it, and it's that thing of like when you've got a, a villain that the audience understand that you 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 really that that brings them way more to life than if it's just like oh they're evil for the sake of it they just want to be yeah. evil because that just that's that hand of the writer thing isn't it because nobody in real life is just evil for no reason they all have like their motivations for because that's the other thing is, is no one ever sees themselves as evil it's like you need a character that like underst- that thinks what they're doing is right and you need to justify that and if you don't you just you just end up with really uninteresting characters um uh, the, yeah just doing stuff because they've been given the label by the writer that says evil so yeah jet's a perfectly complicated character and that makes this episode sing that and i think this episode is structured a lot better storytelling wise than the previous episode um not to keep coming down on the on the, the water bending scroll episode but this one is like kind of the opposite of that in terms of that one is like it's just all the story beats are just really forced everything's being sort of bent into the shape they want it and it just feels like that was a lot of work to get it to the where they wanted it whereas this episode actually seems to flow very naturally and easily into the story beats they want without them having to force it in any way um and that gives it that gives this episode a much more cohesive vibe like from top to bottom um, this episode sort of just really naturally it's the old south park uh creators thing matt stone and trey parker talked about when you're writing you don't want your story to be like this happened and this happened and this happened you want your story to be this happened therefore this happened which meant that this happened and the difference is that these two episodes we've just reviewed <laughs> like, yeah. like yeah last week's episode was this happened and then this happened, and then this happened because it was they get to the thing, they find the water scroll, well, they, and they find the water scroll, and there's pirates, and Zuko shows up. You know what I mean? It was it was very that they, none of those things were happening because of the previous thing; they were all just happening. It was piling on. Whereas this episode was they meet Jet, therefore they get pulled into his freedom fighter group, and then Sokka discovers the truth. You know what I mean? And it is that is exactly it. And it and it just as a result, it's just a much more entertaining episode. And there's something I always find, and these plots are so cliched, but I do find them. I, I must admit, I always get sucked in by them. The whole no one believes someone plot when they know someone's 
morally corrupt and other people just think mm. they're being jealous. I don't know why that's I, I that seems to work 9 times out of 10 for me. I just go that, that for some reason there's just something very frustrating about it. You like in this episode I felt for soccer's frustration when I first watched it. I was like, "Oh, why won't they did listen? You, he knows." Did you, <laughs> did you have someone in your life that everyone loved that you knew was <laughs> that you knew was a villain Dan? Is that is that some sort of rooted uh, no, no, because that's me. <laughs> For everyone else, <laughs> uh, that's why I'm not putting Jay in the Nobed Hall of Fame. I can't. There, I can't do that to myself. Essentially, no. <laughs> is there a, is there an uncle somewhere that was that was running a drug scam that no one believed you on? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, guys, he's literally smoking crack right now. They're like, it's a cigarette. I'm like, but it's, it's there. Can you smell it? <laughs> uh, He's like injecting his arm with a band round. I'm like, now he's doing heroin. They're like, no, I don't know what you're talking about, Dan. He's clearly fine. And the he's... shady people have shown up. I'm like, look, he's changing money with that guy and giving him a, a bag. Yeah, it's it's probably just a probably just he's probably just lending sugar to a neighbour. <laughs> For someone who's claiming that wasn't the case, those were some awfully real examples that came <laughs> off your tongue very quickly, there, Dan. <laughs> so... You cracked my backstory. <laughs> but now I have an explanation for all my shitty behaviour. <laughs> I think, um, <laughs> but yes, it's, it's also because a lot of what Soccer said, you know, you do. He's what's also really clever about it is at the beginning, he's kind of also the voice of the audience because you do go, yes, yeah, actually, you shouldn't, you probably shouldn't always fly on Appa. Correct, that's a good point. Like he's not, he's not incorrect with what he's saying. But I think yeah. the other, the other reason Appa, Appa's show... not subtle. They're not, they're, oh, we were only what ten episodes in, and we've already had multiple shots of people watching Appa fly away. Like he's very, he yeah. just, he stands out flying through the sky. He really does. I think what's also, what this show, a real strength of this show that I've sort of noticed 10 episodes in, um, or, you know, across the 10, is that mm. the characters are so consistent. They never, yes. they, it's not like they learn stuff and then forget it. It's not like stuff happens where you think, well, you wouldn't have, you, that, this feels like an odd decision for your character to make. Yeah. Um, and soccer in particular is written really well and this written is. really consistently. Yeah. Uh, it's it's amazing because when this episode starts, I don't know if um, if you have the same experience as me because it depends how Netflix. Because Netflix Netflix is weird with this show. If you start watching Avatar on Netflix and you let it flow episode to episode, it skips the previously on, and just gets you into the episode. But if you turn it on and you haven't, and it's the first episode you're watching in that sort of sitting, it will show you the previously on, and yeah. so I got the previously on for this one. Yeah, the Which... previously on, I, I never usually, because obviously for me, I'm always, I'm never watching it in one sitting because we're talking about it exactly. afterwards. Exactly, precisely. Um, but I, I usually skip the previously on, but for some reason today I watched it and it really added to the episode. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting so... this one because it, 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 it stood out as being more relevant because it, it, it went right back to the first episode and yeah. soccer, you know, training the, those that's why kids I watched and his it, leadership. Because I was thing. like, why have we gone back this far and just yeah. therefore didn't hit skip? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what. I, yeah, that's exactly the situation I was in. Really, I thought it was a really interesting choice to like sort of telegraph that it was going to be a bit more of a soccer episode. Um, but yeah, his his moral fiber still. It, what's amazing about soccer is he does he does come across sometimes as brash or abrasive or like arrogant, almost like you know being like I'm leader, I'm I'm leader, I'm the I'm the most well by far the most equipped to lead this, you know. Ang's the avatar, sure, but he's a goofy kid right now. And Ang's like, "Yeah, I am." And he's like, upside down, hanging off Apple, like being a dickhead, you know. And like, it's arrogance, but it's like, actually, Sokka's got a point. Like, who else is going to actually guide this, you know, as a as a as a mission? He's the oldest, uh, and to some extent, the wisest, and then and therefore, and also the most trained in terms of like he he's done the most stuff in terms of getting people prepared to deal with the fire nation but he's also got a really really consistent moral compass as well which is actually mm. something they really need like he picks up almost immediately even before the very overt sequence where jet attacks you know this innocent old man simply because he's wearing red robes you know he's fire nation um but even before that soccer is wary of jet's shtick um he sort of there's just something about jet that like his instincts and again his instincts come up a lot in this episode pick up mm. on um that's Great actually kind of a, ru- a running part of this episode you know this idea that soccer follows his instincts um like it's actually what leads him to saving everyone in the end 
because obviously they did have that think, blasting jelly did, thing. Did you find with that, like, <laughs> I loved that, and I loved that he went to the village and didn't, like, try and stop it. He knew it was happening, but he decided to, you know, save the people. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that, I think that's one, that's one trope we're seeing more of, like, you know, Thor Ragnarok very much did that. Um, yeah. And I hope that trope doesn't start to get overused. Obviously, I'm aware this aired ages ago, I'm not comparing yeah. it like that, but I'm saying it's one of those things where I don't think, I don't think we've quite seen that as much as we're going to going forward, because it's a, always a really clever idea. Yeah. Um, but do you, do you, that does mean the Fire Nation also then let him leave. <laughs> Do you think they just had a particularly unvicious batch of soldiers or something? Well, I, I get soccer on his own without Ang isn't anything, is he? Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, he's point. just he's because I mean, that's the thing is I think the problem that they've often got is Ang is a very distinctly Airbender, therefore stands out as Avatar. Therefore, anyone with Avatar is capturable. I mean, if if just Soccer and Katara were out in the world they probably wouldn't get into nearly half as much trouble if they didn't have Aang with them. Because yeah, that makes, Sokka and that Katara on their own are just like two kids, aren't they, from the water trap that have ventured out. Like, you know, you're not, children aren't really going to be your, 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 your focus. The only reason they tend to bother with them usually is because, like I said, uh, Aang being a very uh, blatant, uh, you know, uh, thing. And then again, I suppose they stumble into the the Fire Nation in the early part of this episode, and they don't even really take that much time to take in whether Aang is the Avatar or not. They just sort of go straight to try to capture them, which does, yeah, I suppose, that... go back on that point that I've just made. So yeah, maybe. No, but the, to be fair, they tr- they don't. One, it's a lot more imposing. There's three of them and a big bison. And two, we don't know what the conversation was then going to be because they never get to capture them. Right. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. It might have just been a, you know, what are you, who, what, what are you kids up to? Like, I'm suddenly. Do you, do you mind? Have you got something to make a big point on? Because I desperately need the loo and thought I could hold it in for another twenty minutes and can't. Is that all right? You, you could absolutely fine? go to the. Loo. I mean, I, I don't have a big point to make, but I, I can continue talking about this episode. No problem. <laughs> I just did. Th- I just did thirty episodes of uh, of Infinity Train rambling reviews where I just talked to myself for thirty minutes a time. So I think I can manage that here. Um, I think Chris is already gone. So uh, that's that shows how desperate he was, listeners. Um, so let me have a look at my notes, see what we got. So, oh yeah, so I think one thing that's worth talking about here, and I and I and I hate to repeat myself because anyone who's listened to all of these has already heard me say this, but the thing that always sticks out to me from this episode is how clear and perfect the example of the old man is. Um, uh, of that idea of not everyone in the Fire Nation is automatically evil. Like, you know, the re- leaders don't represent the people. And this is the the first time, I think, if you're not looking out for the more subtle examples of that earlier than this, this is the first overt example of that. Um, and I think it's just really well done. I think you really do feel immediately like this old man is absolutely innocent. Um, it's not like at first you th- you're suspicious too of him. Like, straight away, it rings alarm bells for you as an audience member that Jet should maybe be chilling out and not you know harassing this guy um and seeing like when he kicks the, the staff out from from under him and stuff it just feels so it's 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 like almost upsetting it's wrong and you know it is and that's i think a really powerful element of this episode because it really drives home that message i think cleaner and clearer than any previous um uh, episode has done um and i think that's a really important uh uh, I think it's something that's really important to establish more overtly because, again, they've had subtle hints to that and I've referenced it a couple of times in this podcast as something I pick up on a lot from the show. But that is, I think, just a really clean, clear demonstration of that idea actually in the context of the episode, like overtly part of the story of the episode and that makes it different. Um, and that's why I, I appreciated it so much. Um I can't get that idea out of my head that they maybe that maybe the Fire Nation should have questioned soccer a bit more, but I guess he came in, rescued everyone. I guess they just let him go because he'd done the right thing. <laughs> like he came in and saved them. <laughs> but yeah, now I'm thinking about it. I can't. I can't not think about that. <laughs> That's, um, yeah, um, and also like, how genius is it to bring the old man back as the source of like a, a resolution for that the idea that the that soccer's kindness actually ended up being repaid you know because if, if he hadn't have been kind to that old man um 
when there wasn't really a major incentive to like he didn't need to do that like it was obviously put him at odds with jet like but his his choice to put his morals above keeping the peace with jet actually like saved people in the end because that old man wouldn't have believed him otherwise and uh yeah, so they so that's I think that's like another really amazing element of this episode because I think as a writer, you I I wouldn't necessarily even think to bring the old man back, but the idea that the old man's actually was the you know Sokka's choice there in the end is what is what part of what saves people is 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 pretty great. Um, I can't tell if Chris has come back or not. I suspect not. Hmm. Huh. I think he's muted me. He's got me on absolute silence. So I can't, I have no idea where Chris is up to. I may now just pause because I feel like this is too much of me talking. I didn't realize he'd be gone for quite this long. Uh, sorry, I forgot to take you off mute. Hey. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, there you are. Hello. Hey, I'm back? sorry, I forgot to take you off mute. Are you on, are you back at the mic or am I talking? To yeah, I'm back at right the mic now. now yeah. Okay, great. Um, you forgot. That. Okay, perfect. Yeah, because I'm just sat there, like I just I, I'm wrapping up. I'm thinking I haven't heard him return to his mic. I'm just sitting here talking to myself. Like I can't hear anything on the other end. <laughs> um, I completely agree with. Uh, if anyone thinking that was weird, by the way, it. I have to put him on mute, mute, but then still, we always do that. If one of us has to dart off, we tend to keep the other one still on headphones because otherwise I could come back and go, hey, Dan, what did you think of the old man? <laughs> and Dan goes, uh, <laughs> I'll just repeat what I just said. So if anyone's like, did Chris just nip to the loo, mute himself, but stay listening to Dan? That's the reason um, that we do that. Um, thank you, Dan. Um, I really needed to pee. That's yeah. presumably not what you wanted to chat about. You wanted to chat more about the episode? Fair enough. Um, the <laughs> I, I thought yeah. the old man bit was genius. And the old man sort of helps you go, well, maybe he, maybe the old man was like, no, he didn't want to attack. And like maybe the old man's one of the reasons they then let him go. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. Also, also, like, also, there's also just... a part of me that just goes like, they don't know who Sokka is. They don't necessarily know he's Water Tribe. He's come in and said he thinks there's a threat to the town. The town's then been flooded. Everyone's evacuated. To be honest with you, I think that kid's probably, even in, in the wake of their homes being destroyed, I don't think anybody who lives in that town, Fire Nation or not, cares about who Sokka is. <laughs> like, <No. laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, he probably, he may very well have slipped away. Yeah, yeah. The, well, the yeah. In, 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 well, in, 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 in the way they show it, which which is an interesting choice, by the way. They chose not to animate the backstory to that. They just had like still images of Sokka going to talk to him that were like kind of artfully done, mm. which I thought was which I thought was interesting. I, I I I can't decide if I preferred that to just sort of seeing some images of it, but it's quicker, I guess. So yeah, it's probably the way to do it. Yeah, I hadn't even thought, I hadn't thought of that because it is quite visually jarring compared to the other stuff, isn't it? Yeah, it's like really, it's like very, it's like very stylized images um, of what yeah. happened, um, and I and, and like I, I, ju- I just think it's, it's it, well, it's just it's just the way they chose to tell to tell the memory, I suppose, because it's quicker to show an image of it happening and cut between them than have shots that move, because then you've got to complete like so you've got to have some sort of complete movement to make the shot like worth having on for just a couple seconds. Um but so yeah, I guess that's the yeah, so the other thing that's genius about the the old man sequence is you as an audience member, I I mean I I was pretty sure Jet was Jet was a wrong one. But mm-hmm. I think what's really fun is that the knife thing you as an audience member are potentially sat there going, did he have a knife? Is that true? They could have taken a knife. Is he telling the truth? Is soccer, is soccer right? Like, you know, they don't, they kind of let the audience in to, and confirm the, say, at the same point where they confirm it to soccer. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But the, 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 uh, the sword holding the poison, you begin to doubt, but you're still not sure who to believe. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's quite clever. Yeah, I agree. I really do agree. I think that's. I think you're right. They they don't. Even though you're pretty sure the same way soccer is, not confirming it until soccer has it absolutely confirmed later in the episode, is is clever because it just gives you enough doubt to keep you not. Well, yeah, maybe entertained is the word. Like it's you know because there's that there's constantly a question hanging over everything that's happening in front of you. You know. Um, mm. and I think that is quite clever. I also think this episode does something really clever with Katara. I think the idea of uh, having a Katara have another sort of 
uh, mildly romantic but not overtly romantic relationship that doesn't immediately spark jealousy and ang is is probably wise. Yeah, yeah, I enjoyed that. We um, had that with I, the, I, the, with the with the earthbending guy Haru as well, and they handled it similarly well. I think. I can't decide whether it was a step too far to have the kind of uh, 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 sort of music and colours as they were oh, going yeah. up the tree. Yeah, like they, they do like a oh. pink background and they have like, yeah, yeah. Like quite quite lovey music while the two go up together on that rope thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so I couldn't decide whether that was like, I enjoyed it at the time, but thinking about it, considering they don't do anything like that again... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but anyway, I think um, maybe yeah, that was just the their fact... way of conf- sort of showing like the smittenness of Katara with yeah. Jet, which I suppose goes some way to justifying her blind trust of Jet a little bit later, because realistically, Sokka, her brother, who she's known all her life, saying, "I'm telling you, this dude's a bad dude. I watched him bully an old man." She probably, in normal circumstances, should believe that. No, but she, that's, that's Sokka that's doesn't why... have much reason to, to to lie. So I guess by making it a kind of slightly romantic relationship, she's sort of blinded by that. No, but I don't think it's just that though. It's also that that's that's what's so clever about this entire script and the way it flows. Because also, mm. don't forget, Sokka's Sokka in their eyes cocked up. Sokka didn't. Sokka's instinct said we shouldn't fly. And yes. then, whilst I think he was right, that in their eyes led to that led to them getting captured. So yes. she's starting from a point of being irritated by Sokka and his judgment because of that. So, like, yeah. not only is there not only yes, you're right, is there the the romantic side of things, but also she's she's already irritated by Sokka and by him calling them the leader and stuff like that. So she's she's got all these reasons culminating yeah. to to just dismiss it. It's a very very well written episode. Yeah, I I you know I yeah I 100 percent agree. I think there's there's a bunch of stuff that make you believe that, despite the fact that in reality, like outside of the circumstances they set up here, strictly speaking, Ang and Katara should trust and believe Sokka. Yeah. But between Sokka leading them astray because of his instincts, and then when they ask him about Jet. He even references his instincts again as being a, one of the reasons for not trusting Jet, which is literally the thing that got them into trouble in the first place. <laughs> you know, it's it, yeah, you're right. They set it up beautifully. It's it, and it pays off excellently as well. Like I said, with the with the old man thing. Um, so yeah, I mean, have a look. I've, I'm sure I've got other notes. Yeah, any but... other any other notes? Oh yeah, the, yeah the, I've got two things I want to bring up actually very quickly. Um, where does Ang's glider come from? This, this might be a new segment. Where did it come from? Where did it go? Where did it come from? Ang's glider. Like, what? So, he's... Right. Like, let's just set the scene for anyone who doesn't quite remember the episode. Um, one of the things they have to do to get the dam to burst in a way that is um, that is going to damage things, they need more water behind it. So, what Jet tells Ang and Katara is that the Fire Nation are due to try and burn down the forest, and they're going to stop it, but they need access to more water. So, he tells them to use water bending on these geysers to get the get them flowing into the main river. So he leaves them there doing that, but tells them go back to the go back to the camp. Don't come to the where we are. Go to the camp, right? So they they get the water out. And as far as I can remember is not holding his staff. He doesn't have his staff. It's not round his neck, or, you know, attached to his back or anything like that. He's using his hands to do the water bending. Then Katara's like, "Well, let's go see Jet. We finished early." And he's like, yeah, but he said we should go back to the thing. She's like, yeah, but we f- we finished early. We can go see what he's up to. So then they go to Jet. They're on their way there. And that's when they see from a distance up on a, like a cliff that they're putting the blasting jelly, which, by the way, there's a very good joke earlier in this episode where they when they raid the yeah. Fire Nation camp. And they go, I found blasting jelly. I also found jelly sweets. And Jet's just like, let's not mix those two up, which I just thought was yeah, a really good little that joke. That was very good. <laughs> um... <laughs> um so they see that, and Ang is holding the staff. So when they get to the top of that hill, they can see it happening. He's holding the staff that entire scene because at the end of that scene, he tries to fly away, and Jet stops him, and that's when it becomes clear that Jet is is a bad dude to them. And breaks the staff. Can we say? Can we add? What's that, sir? Rips it. He rips the staff, doesn't he? So he, he does. He does. Yeah. yeah. So he sort of like, he gets torn at the bottom end, so it doesn't fly properly. Um, mm. But where did it come from? They never went back to the camp. So if they'd left it back there with like Apa and stuff. They never went back for it. I don't understand, Chris. Is he hiding this staff up his ass? What is this? 
I think I had a feeling that's what you were building to. Um, potentially, yeah, Dan. Potentially. <laughs> that's why he's always so happy. Items just fold down so they can they can just just slip them in your pocket. I don't understand. I really this is really <laughs> now. I've watched this show through many many times, Chris, and I have never been as confused about this as I am on this reviewing. I'm watching out for it now. I don't understand it. I don't I, understand it. I don't know whether... I don't know if you heard... I, I said a really bad joke, and I don't know whether drawing attention to it makes it better, or if it's weird if it just sits there. I suggested that maybe that's why Ang was always so happy. Um, <laughs> I but, didn't hear that. No. <laughs> that's fair. I, re- I regret drawing attention to it. Appalling joke. I, I apologise. I could have um, easily pretended know. to be like the hero there and say, Chris, I heard it and decided not to reference it because I didn't want to... I appreciate, and that's what I thought you were going to do. So I appreciate you laughing. I thank you for that. I uh, I appreciate that. Um, I don't know, maybe. Yeah, there are very. We need to staff watch. We we need to become a thing because it yeah, is. What, weird. what does he do? Where's that thing coming from? Because it's funny because yeah. it feels like the animators realised it would seem odd if he just drew it from nowhere. So when they cut and then cut back to Ang and Katara, when they reach that cliff. He's holding it that entire scene. They're not that inconsistent. It doesn't literally appear out of nowhere. So you could sort of say he somehow collected it between the two. Like, it's not impossible he acquired it between the two scenes. But it's not likely. Because no, they very that would, clearly have, state where they're rev- going. Yeah, he'd have reversed... He'd have double-backed on himself. Like. Yeah. So it doesn't... It, you, you could just Maybe about... It was... Like, it doesn't defy physics... But it does defy maybe, logic. <laughs> maybe it was on the ground or something while they were yeah. doing the water bending. Maybe, maybe. I think, I, I think it's one of those things where they just go, "It's fine." He could, it, if anyone, if anyone questions it, it's on his back. Like, <laughs> so yeah. they just get but away it's with not it like we can see it. Uh, anyway, um, the other thing what I wanted to bring up, thing? yeah, because, uh, that's related to that is uh, how great is that final fight scene between? Because this episode's not very action packed, generally speaking, and not compared to some of the previous ones we've seen as well. I mean, even the the episode just before this one was a was a lot more action packed than this was. I don't was know. Like, there's the fight. There's the fight between Jet and his gang. And by the way, the gang are great. What a great form, you know. What a, a great collection of people with backstories. And yeah, I, I love yes. the gang. Yes. Um, we had the fight where they saved them, and then obviously the fight at the end and stuff. So. I think it's yeah. fairly. There's like two, there's two. There's two, admittedly fairly short action sequences in this episode, but there were three or four, and they were a bit longer in the previous one. So it just the, mm-hmm. the, that balance shifts. So that's fine. That's one of the things we've complimented the show about in the past is its ability to just say, well, this week there's not as much comedy, or this week there's not as much action. Then that's just fine. No problem. Yeah. Like you, as no, long well, as you're replacing no, it no... with the, with the, with drama and like you know character stuff, then I don't mind losing action and comedy. Yeah. Like that's fine. Well, there was no fire dude stuff this week either. No, no Zuko at all. No Zuko at all. Yeah. Um, which is actually kind of funny because um, one of the things they based this episode off was the movie Hook, the Robin Williams movie. Because mm. um, it's that sort of Lost Boys, you know, it's a bunch of kids living in the trees, you know, mm. causing a ruckus and that. Murdering, and, murdering families, yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, what's interesting about that is uh the voice actor of zuko dante bosco was rufio the leader of the lost boys in the film hook so oh, it's wow. a it's a, there's a there's a weird sort of looping logic thing there of that yeah. <laughs> which is pretty cool um I, I i really liked her i don't know if she's i think she's done it before but her freezing the water to trap him i, I think we've great. yeah i think we've seen it done before once by accident i think she, i think there was a she was like, oh, it was on the boat in maybe the second or third episode, and they were like, "Can you waterbend to get us out of this?" And she tries, and she ends up like freezing the wrong person, but it ends up like catching a Fire Nation dude. Yeah, like I think that. you're right. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's uh, so yeah. She's she's done it before, but with not with the same. Um, it was more of an accident, a, a lucky accident. The previous time she did it, whereas this time it felt like she'd sort of mastered how to freeze water and, and was able to do it. To, to, to sort of freeze uh, Jet in place at the end. But that action sequence through the trees, Jet and Aang, is great. It's really well animated. Yeah, like, the, what they make up for in, 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 you know, 
a lower amount of action in this episode. So what they lose in the the, the quantity of action, they make up for in the quality of the action, uh, because that is a really cool fight scene. It's not very long, but it is really awesome. The, those two flying through the trees, obviously Jet using those like hook things to sort of like slide around and come after Ang. I think it's just really well done. I just yeah. really enjoyed that. Um, so yeah, and I, yeah, and I agree with you. The gang are great. Like Smellerby um long shot um pip squeak like just a real fun gang like and the oh the duke yeah just big fan of all those guys i think that's a i think they're great and I, there's a really good joke early on there's the duke and uh pip squeak and you the audience assume which way round it is but ang yeah. correctly assumes that it's the big guys called pip squeak and he's laughing he's like you find my name funny and i was like i do it's hilarious and he's like yeah it is <laughs> so that's a, a yeah they're, they're a good little gang i quite like them um would you it's, hope to um, see any would you hope to see these guys again at any point yeah definitely i definitely want it yeah i think they set them you know you almost it's almost a shame to devote time to fleshing out the characters of the gang uh, and to make Jet, you know, an antagonist to never see them again. So I would yeah. definitely hope to see them again. I love my favourite joke of the episode was the one at the very end where, where Sokka's like, well, sometimes my instincts are right. And then he's like, you know, we're going the wrong way. And sometimes they're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, that reminded me a lot of one of my favourite jokes from uh, the Lord of the Rings trilogy. And it's not in the theatrical cut, but in the extended cut... For those who haven't seen it in Lord of the Rings, it's first Fellowship of the Ring. It's when they're leaving. Um, is it River, Riverdale? Uh, no, Riverdale's the CW show. River River Run. River. That's no. That's Game of Thrones. R- Rivendell, the place no, where the elves are, and they're going on their big quest. They've just formed the Fellowship. They've got the weight ring. They've got their goal, and it's all sort of come together. And the music is rising. Dun, 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 dun. And Frodo's like leading the you know his his troop out of River, Rivendell to, like, go on their quest to, to, to drop the ring in Mordor. It's, bah, 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 like, music just got... And then it just suddenly stops, and Frodo's like, Gandalf, which way is Mordor? <laughs> Gandalf's like, it's left. And then they go left. <laughs> it's great. Like, it's just such a fun moment, because it's just so building, and then it just, like, completely undercut by, like, so will be completely directionless. <laughs> um, it's such a good moment from, uh, from Lord of the Rings. But, yeah, that reminded me of that in a, in a good way. Um... Yeah, I'd like to see the gang again, um, and I, I think, I mean, it's it's interesting, isn't it? Because you sort of go like, you don't know. You, it, it's hard to imagine how they'd be able to bring these guys back in it if if Hang and the gang are traveling still. Because yeah, it seems, which yeah, seems unlikely which, they would come back then, necessarily to this location. But no, but they brought Cabbage Man back, and you know maybe. <laughs> Maybe the gang moves on. Maybe they get captured. Like you know, mm-hmm. there are ways you could do it. Yeah, absolutely, there are. I, I would want to. Um, was there was there any truth? A little bit of truth this week, Chris. A little oh, bit. What a little truth? tiny bit. A little bit better than last week. So the episode's original title was going to be "The Rebels," according to that weird old Nickelodeon website that we've referenced a couple of times. Good um, episode title. So they have, yeah, uh, yeah, not bad. I I, I like Jet to be honest. Yeah, with you, but the, Jet, the Jet's better. But it. yeah, no. Um, Avatar Extras states that the fight between Aang and Jet in the trees was inspired by Naruto, um, as much of Ner- the Naruto anime takes place, you know, uh, in forests with trees that are like six stories high. So yeah, that's 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 about right. Um, as I've already mentioned, Jet's hideout is very similar to Peter Pan's hideout in the 1991 movie Hook, and obviously the Dante Bosco connection there. Um, this is the first episode where Katara is seen intentionally using her ice, uh, like ice to freeze someone. I think that's yeah, we've covered that. Um, Jet's design, specifically his hairstyle, seems loosely based on Spike's design from the anime Cowboy Bebop, which is something I didn't ever notice. But as soon as I read that, I went, "Yes, that is accurate." Um, he just needs a long jacket and to have his hands in his pockets. Um, and then the final thing that I think is really interesting here. Now, you may you may not have noticed the name in the credits, and he's come up a couple of times. He's directed a few of the episodes we've seen so far, Chris. But the name Dave Filoni ring any bells? Yeah, it does. Um, isn't Dave Filoni connected in some way to Kevin Smith, or am I imagining that completely? Ooh, uh, if he is, I don't know necessarily about that. It's possible though, because. Dave Filoni is the guy that has ultimately taken over at Lucasfilm as being in charge of like a lot of their television output. So he um, was just might just be that he mentions him a lot. Maybe. Yeah, that might be it. If he's a big fan of like Star Wars stuff, like man. So for example, Dave Filoni was responsible for the Clone Wars, Rebels, and upcoming Mandalorian. He was the sort of showrunner on those, as well as directing and writing a ton of it. 
Um, he uh, worked on the first season of, of Avatar: The Last Airbender before he before he moved on to doing that stuff. And he's actually um, designed parts of the forest in Jet's Hideout um, to look a little bit like the Ewoks uh, forest village in in Return of the Jedi. Um, his original sketches of the hideout actually referred to the middle section of the trees where the hideout was located as the Ewok area. Um, so yeah, it, clearly his love of Star Wars even prior to getting handed the keys. Because he's kind of being considered as George Lucas's sort of protege, like he's sort of the the key holder for the law. Like uh, when they want to make when they when they're making choices about what to do, like he's kind of like Disney's like expert at Lucasfilm now that like knows yeah. he knows the world and the characters better than anyone. So they, he seems to supervise on a lot of the stuff they do. Um, he's not quite the Kevin Feige of um, Star Wars, but he's on his way. Like if they keep going the way they're going, they're going to pretty much start handing him the keys to the kingdom because everything he does seems to get critically, you know, praised. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas a lot of the stuff Disney have done outside of his purview, mostly the movies, has has had mixed response. It's, it's funny stuff like that, though, isn't it? Because there's no way, like, uh, and obviously I don't know, but I can't see a world where. They didn't ask him some questions or consult in some form with him, even if it's uncredited on like Rogue One or, yes. um, uh, you know, Solo. Like, yeah. I just can't, I can't see a world where that resource isn't tapped into. <laughs> like, but yeah. Which because is it's those... uncredited, it gets praised. Uh, quite rightly, you know, he's done some incredible things. I'm not saying, I'm not saying yeah. that praise is wrong. I'm just saying for the people that go, oh, well, he didn't touch this. It's like, you know, he'd be. It's, it's like with it's like with shows, like episodes not written by certain people, and it's like, but often it's a writer's room, and that you know, that yes. everyone everyone is you know in some in some way responsible. Yeah, um, and particularly, I think he, he he there are you can see some of Filoni's fingerprints on Rogue One and Solo actually specifically <clears throat> because. Um, uh, Rogue One has a direct reference, two direct references to Star Wars Rebels, and Solo has a direct reference to the Clone Wars in um, a returning, a briefly returning character in a cameo. Um, the fact that character is even alive is explained in the Clone Wars. So I'm not going to say any more. Very that confusing for anyone that didn't watch Clone Wars. <laughs> Yes, I imagine definitely that would be the case. Yes, a hundred percent. But yeah, so uh, so he's uh, Filoni's clearly you know big Star Wars fan. I've, I've, it's really nice to read that he was such a Star Wars fan, even in back then when he was just working on Avatar. Like Star Wars was where his brain was at. I think that's just a really nice thing to read. <laughs> I don't know. That just makes me happy because he's sort of he's he is sort of being considered as sort of Lucas's protege, um, and he's he's like I said, he's being handed more and more of the power, particularly. Um, uh, with the Mandalorian being such a hit, he he's sort of yeah getting a lot of uh, praise and stuff, and obviously his work with Favreau on that has been has been very very well received. So there you go. Anyway, um, so yeah, he directed this episode and a handful of the episodes in season one. Um, he doesn't, I don't believe he worked on the show after season one though, uh, which is a shame. I guess that is when he probably split off to start working on Clone Wars or something like that. Yeah, fair uh, enough. There you go. So there you go. That's the truth. That's all the stuff. What are we? Great what, truth. What, where, where are we at with the show in general? Did we remember any of this episode? I keep forgetting to ask that. Did any of this ring a bell to you, or was this like watching it like brand new? I, vaguely, but I, I think my answer is always going to vaguely, like yeah, like I wasn't. I was like, oh yeah, and I, and I think I remember enjoying it as well. I think I remember enjoying the gang aspect, but you know, as I as I keep stressing, twenty two minute episodes bulk watched six years ago, like. Mm-hmm. My memory of it is about as good as you could expect it to be. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Yeah, it's, um, it's always worth checking in just in case. Yeah, I, I don't suppose, know. Like, I, I'm pretty. Confident. I suppose if it, I, never, I suppose if an episode I, ever like strikes you, you'll tell me. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm fairly confident. I'm never going to go. Hey, Dan, it's the next episode, and then just completely reveal the plot <laughs> and be like, I think I remember this. <laughs> fair enough. Yeah, um, that's fair. But yeah, I um. Uh, no, I think it's kind of like because, like, yeah. So you, this was longer ago, but it it would be like me. It would be like if we started rewatching Only Fools and Horses, and me being like, "Do you remember watching that? Do you remember how you felt when you watched that seven years ago?" And you being like, "Vaguely, I don't know." Like, <laughs> yeah, maybe, but I do feel like with some of those Only Fools and Horses ones, like the episode would start and I'd remember where it was going. Like I go, "Oh yeah, this is the one where this and this happens." Like I, okay, yeah, if you ask me now, what what's the 
what you know what happens in the first couple of episodes of Ollie Fields and Horses, I could not tell you for the life of me, no memory whatsoever. But I yeah. find that when I've seen something before, I have that weird effect of the track like muscle sort memory. of yeah, yeah. building in ahead of me. So like yeah. as I start watching the episode. I start putting the pieces together and going, oh, I remember exactly where this is going. This is going to be this and this and this. Oh, I remember this one. Yeah, this is like, this is a good one or whatever. Or certain scenes from the episode come back to me. Like we're rewatching The Office now and it's the and it's the first time I've seen that in a good couple of years. Actually, maybe even four or five years, something similar to the gap you've had here. And there are episodes that start and I'm like, I have no idea where this is going. Like none yeah. at all. Like the, the one we watched yesterday was um, the Prince Family Paper episode. Oh, I love that episode. Which is a wonderful episode that I had no memory of. And I mean literally none. Like, we started watching it, I was like... Yeah, it's I... interesting, because I wonder if... Because I've, I've re-watched The Office at least four times. But I mm. wonder if some of these episodes... Like, I imagine, certainly when you get into, like, season eight. Yes. I wonder if it's only the second time you've ever watched it. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, well, that might be true for some of the very later stuff, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, this one I will have seen before, because it's, it's, well, we're reasonably early still. We're season five, and I've definitely watched the show a couple times through um so i've definitely seen it more than once but yeah for, it's been long enough ago that like but with that said towards the end certain things started coming back to me because i was starting to see the path of the episode yeah. so i was going oh yeah and this and this and this so i i do keep wondering like when you're watching these like do you get halfway through an episode and then remember how it ends has anything like that has happened yet or are you or, or is no. it just like no okay it's interesting um it's Which I think those... says a lot about how interested I was when I watched it the first you time. You took the words out of my mouth. I was just about to make a snotty joke about how much attention you were paying the first time. <laughs> but I don't even think, I don't even know if it was attention. I, c- I couldn't honestly tell you. Um, but I, it might, it, the intro, I, I would like to think I would never have been obnoxious enough to have been playing on my phone while the episode was just on in the background. Um, but how much, you know, I... How it may be that it felt, it, you know, that, oh, <laughs> as much as it's gonna, it's, I, this is both a joke and not, but don't take it the wrong way. It might have, I might have viewed it as a resentful chore. Do you know what I mean? That you were forcing yeah. me to watch it, so, so that could have harpered my enjoyment. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I think there's an element of that. Of that. I think there's got to be an element of like how engaged you were. Like, yeah. obviously, The Office is a show I like very much. I would have been yeah. engaged watching that original that you know that 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 those episodes originally therefore are more likely to remember them the only fools and horses is a show i chose to watch because i like it yeah I something more like likely we to just... then remember it when rewatching it even if it has been and i, I haven't watched only fools and horses since we were in uni i don't think um, yeah something like alf weeder's own pet that you watched because i made you watch it for a podcast episode i'm not sure how well you'd remember that if you rewatched it now I don't know because with that one, actually, I I did I that I really enjoyed watching that for that podcast episode though. Yeah. So I think like I I, I I I that didn't feel so much of a chore because I enjoyed the show in the end. Like it was you yeah, know fair. I I had my uh, you know whereas I feel I do feel like you were kind of only half enjoying the show initially. So I could totally see your your attention yeah. waning to the point that you weren't taking in details or committing details to like long term memory <laughs> is essentially what yeah. I think has happened. Um, yeah. If I yeah. was if I was speculating, and, and I still think there's a good chance that I when when you said at the end of a tired week how much avatar did you see I there's still I think I still think there's a chance as well as we've discussed before there's some episodes I didn't see yeah it's possible yeah yeah 100%. I reckon I was on like episode 12 or like around now potentially and you were like how much have you seen and to not upset you at the end of a long week I just went ah, oh, no, I've seen about like 18 and then you were like okay well let's watch it and I'm like oh, I can't go back on this now so all right <laughs> <laughs> that idea yeah, yeah. that is totally possible that is 100 percent possible um which is a shame because like some of the best stuff comes in the second half of this season the, the second yeah, half I'm of not, the, hey, we, we, i'm not saying i wasn't wrong <laughs> a lot of people like sort of talk about this show as sort of like picking up in its second season but i really think the second half of this first season is where it sort of becomes what it's becoming like in terms of the yeah. quality um i think it really starts to find its feet there's a few wobbly episodes in this first half or not wobbly but like imperfect like last week's episode that kind of level of imperfect um with one exception um and i think that i think people have a 
ha- have like a there's an automatic memory of this show being like like in quote marks bad at the beginning like and i and i think that's just like a, one of those like inherited viewpoints that people just sort of mm. of mass agreed is true but actually if you sit down and watch it you realize there's only a, there's only a couple of episodes that's, that are wobbly and they're only wobbly they're not bad you that's know what like I mean? uh that's like um going just briefly revisiting the office it really annoys me when people go oh you can skip season one season one's awful and it's like no the first episode yeah. is flawed because it's an out and out remake pretty much yeah <laughs> but which diversity day which is like episode three is it's, like it's one ep- of the best it's, a, it's epi- actually episode it's actually episode two it's the very next go. episode yeah. and that's one of the best episodes the show ever did yeah and like basketball's very good hot girls are classic like it, yeah. it, it really it's such a shame that like that the epi- is that the episode that has amy re- adams in it yeah that's that blew my mind on the rewatch yeah I was like, Amy Adams was in the office like, all at once. I think she's in yeah, three she episodes. Shows, yeah, I, she shows I think up two she's more in times. Hot Girl, uh, the fire, the fire, yeah. and then she's on the booze cruise episode. Yeah, where Jim this is that, exactly right. Yeah. And like me and Nadia were watching it, just like that's Amy Adams. No, it's not Amy Adams. I think it's Amy Adams. That's Amy Adams. Like we had a whole yeah. like the, like for a few small portion of the episode, we were like are almost like unsure because not because it didn't look or sound like Amy Adams because it just seems so unlikely that Amy Adams was in the office. <laughs> well, it's funny because apparently I think according to the Office Ladies podcast, I think I'm right in saying this. When they recorded it, she was either filming or had just fit the role that then got her the Oscar nomination. And by the time it aired, she was, or by the time she was doing season two episodes, she was right. nominated for an Oscar, <laughs> like which made it even weirder. <laughs> Yeah, that is weird. Bless her. Also, I, I, I like that she sort of seems to have committed to it. It's, 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 she's, yeah. she's doing a good job. Anyway, we're very off topic. Um, yes. Uh, but yeah, a, a really good episode. Um, yeah, I've really enjoyed it. Super excited to see uh, to to get your reaction to the to the upcoming stuff. I think there's some really good stuff for this season. And I'm particularly, I mean, for me, uh, and, and this is <clears throat> this is like a little tease. My favorite character from this show hasn't been introduced yet. So I am particularly excited to get to a particular character's introduction. Um, okay. We're a ways off, but I'm very excited about it. Um, okay. And anyone listening should have a good idea who I'm referring to there. So yeah, there's still so. a lot of really good stuff to come. And one one stinker, at least in your opinion. Yeah, unfortunately. Hmm. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, um, we'll talk about it when we get there. Um, but for those of you who are just sort of just like catching up on this, so if you want to listen to our very next episode discussion, you can do so right now by heading over to the Patreon. As little as one dollar a month gets you access to our Patreon, and um, you can hear episodes a week early. So if you're listening to this on iTunes or Spotify or uh, you know YouTube, you can head over to the Patreon right now and hear us talk about the next episode, um, which is exciting. Obviously, you can get us in all the. Uh, did I give the address? Patreon, patreoncom slash nothing but static. I assume I did, but maybe I did. I'm talking quite fast. He did. Yeah. YouTube.com slash nothing but static UK for other content like this. We do also have a Steven Universe podcast if you're enjoying this that you can go check out, or you can check out our main podcast, Nothing But Static, again in all the usual places, or you know, iTunes and Spotify and stuff. For um, it's a, just a TV podcast where we talk about various TV shows, we review new episodes of stuff, we talk about news, all that jazz. Um oh, also Instagram.com slash Raffo Draws. Check out Raffo Draws, who did the artwork that comes along with this episode. Also, touchlinks.io slash you slash Raffo Draws for access to Raffo's other social medias like Twitter and YouTube and stuff. It has like a list on that page. Um, it's all good. There's some really good artwork on that. And I think there's like a I think there's like a page built into that where you can get like a red bubble type thing where you can buy like t shirts and mugs and stuff with some of the art Raffo's yeah, done that's on cool. them. Which is re- which is really the spe- and particularly when you go on it, the, the thing at the very top is the image we use for this, and it, you can get it on like a t-shirt and stuff. It's really neat. Um, you can get it as a print, like a poster. Um, the, yeah, and just have a scan, just have a scroll down and just see some of the stuff they've got on there. Like they've got phone cases and all sorts with with Raffo's great art on. Um, plenty of Avatar related stuff and uh, some My Hero Academia bits in there. It's really good. Well worth your time. Um, we will keep plugging 
good old Rafa, who very kindly gave us permission to use this art. Um, otherwise, I think that's everything. Oh, I'm at Dan Doolan on Twitter. If you have a thought you want to you want to send my way, or at Chris Billingham, or sorry, at C Billingham with two M's, if you want to send Chris um, your thoughts, or you can email us mail at nothingbutstatic.co.uk. We don't always get back to the emails that we get sent, uh, but we do read them all, um, and we're very grateful for anyone who takes the time to give us their thoughts. We appreciate it. Um, Indeed. Yeah, and you can also review the podcast in all the usual places as well. We'd appreciate that. Like, subscribe, stars, whatever format you're using. They'll have a review system of some sort. Please support us by doing that. That would be great if you're enjoying the content. Um, and then finally, Chris, because we promised we'd do it, um, I'm arbitrarily going to reference my big cup again because we we sort of weirdly made a promise to do that. <laughs> oh, yeah, go, and, and again... That's, We've officially that's per- made it a running gag. <laughs> As per the last uh, the last episode, either have a good or hope you had a good Christmas or New Year. Yeah, because yeah, because if anyone listens to this on the Patreon, it's probably it's probably New Year for them now. It's it's probably twenty twenty one. Oh God, is that a relief? How do you feel? Are you feel like like you've gotten out of twenty twenty? Congratulations! Oh my God, like you'll curse it. You'll <laughs> curse it. Something atrocious will happen, like New Year or something. You'll... Isn't it, isn't that crazy though that we are. Because it doesn't, because, you know, no one's really done much. Um, Like, the fact that, I know we're recording these way in advance, but the fact that we're now recording... Yeah, for those listening, it's the 13th, it's the 13th of October for us. But it's still so weird that we're near the, it doesn't feel like seven months ago or whatever it was that we went into lockdown. Like, what a crazy time. It's been a mad year. Isn't it weird that people listening to this know how certain things that would, that are like, on the edge for us right now are going to turn out like like yeah well, bre- well will brexit response have... to brexit re- response brexit to coronavirus the, the coronavirus well the, coronavirus the... i think will probably still be ongoing unfortunately yes uh, but, but like to, to what level have we had to go back into lockdowns in certain countries yeah. that are having second waves um uh, the u.s election like people listening to this we're so we're, like we, we we're, we're so like it's weird to think they know the answers to these things that are like plaguing us right now <laughs> mm. uh, how, how certain things will turn out because obviously there's so many fears around these things and not to get political on this podcast it's not really what this podcast is about but it is mad to think that the people listening to this are past all of that because <laughs> it yeah, feels like we're about to hit a pinch point where a lot of this stuff is about to unfold <laughs> do you know what i mean like and we're yeah. sort of just like very nervously waiting to see how you know the world around us turns out and like the people listening to this are like they they're in the they're in the after times they know <laughs> yeah i hope weird. i hope anyone in britain is enjoying canned soup and <laughs> you know the only food you can get hold of now <laughs> yeah. how are those how are those chlor- how are those chlorine filled chickens tasting, guys? Yeah. <laughs> hey, but no, but happy New Year. Um, <laughs> Hopefully, Trump's not still clinging onto the White House. But happy New Year. <laughs> That's the thing. Even if even if and I hope he does, uh, but even if Biden wins, like Trump may still be in the White House. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the sc- that's the scary thing. Well, he would well, technically he would be anyway because obviously the inauguration oh, yeah, wouldn't course, happen until yeah. February. But he might still be clinging on. What's funny about that is like John Oliver actually na- nailed like the most worrying part of that. If Biden's people, uh, like supporters, are being smart and voting early to avoid problems on election night, the first results that are going to start coming in are people who did it at the ballots on the day. Because those are easy to count because they're not inside envelopes. And they don't yeah. have to be double-checked against signatures and stuff. There's a lot more work that goes into verifying the authenticity of a vote that went through mail, right? So it's going to look like Trump won initially, <laughs> no matter what. Because it's the Trump people that are all voting on the day. So the Trumpy results are coming in first. <laughs> But so like it's it, like so he, we, the, there's nothing to stop Trump sort of declaring victory on the night, despite the fact that like only thirty percent, forty percent of the votes will have been counted. It's really scary. I just, until I just want to get to yeah, let's just yeah. So so hopefully I know, people I know are living in a nice saying, utopian future where that man's in jail. That'd be lovely. Yeah, I don't know. You, you, I just think it's also no one thought Brexit, no one thought Trump. I just want to. I just I just want. The, the Biden's name declared. <laughs> Ideally, I'd like Johnson to go, you know what? COVID's caused a bit of chaos. Maybe we should delay Brexit, but that ain't going to happen. Um, but anyway, no. let's stop lamenting about the future. And, and genuinely, Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Um, <laughs> if you celebrate, and yeah, apologies if we've... <laughs> Depressed you. <laughs> 
<laughs> let's let's make another joke about my giant cup, Chris. Yeah, how how you finish your tea? You know what? It's it's all, it's 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 a sign of the size of the cup that I haven't. No, I've I've got it's half finished. Yeah, nice. Um, it's a very big cup of tea. I have to at yeah. some point I'll measure the volume that it can hold in water. It's ridiculous. It's more than a pint. It's like two pints, I think. Yeah, wow. It's absurd. This go. cup is mental. I got. I don't know how big. I got a big cup. I don't know how much it holds though. I'll have to check it out. Yeah, we'll do. I tell you, that's an exciting little tease. Then it's the next episode. I will tell you what the volume of my cup is. There you go. And, <laughs> and then I'll tell. And then I'll tell you what the volume of my cup with. Tune in next time for Size Matters with Chris and Dan. <laughs> All right, cool. That is everything for this week. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, we we all hope you're safe and happy wherever you are and whatever your circumstances. Um, stick with us, of course. We've got more Avatar chat and probably more dicking about to come. Um, so thank you for joining us. I've been Dan Doolan. I've been Chris Billingham. And we'll see you in a week's time, or right now if you're on the Patreon, um, as we discuss The Great Divide. <laughs>